Good morning, Calvary. Happy Monday. I'm excited that in less than two weeks from now, we're going to be able to gather again and worship live at our Sweetwater campus. If you hadn't heard, uh, May 30th and 31st, we're uh, relaunching our services at our Sweetwater campus. Five o'clock Saturday night, 8, 9.30 and 11 on Sunday, our usual schedule. And we've made arrangements and preparations for everyone who feels comfortable coming back, including our children's ministry. We're not ready to open uh, McCulloch campus or the Parker campus just yet, so stay tuned for updates on that. Hey, today and uh, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be starting a new devotional series on the letter called 1 John. 1 John. Now, this is John the Apostle who wrote this, uh, and you may be familiar with him if you've read the Gospels. Uh, a lot of times Jesus pulled three of the apostles aside and kind of poured his life into them. That was Peter, James, and John. James and John were brothers, and uh, they were followers of Jesus from the very beginning. They were some of the first disciples that he called. And, uh, and so John is writing this letter. He also wrote the Gospel of John and two other letters. There's 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John that we have in the New Testament. So uh, I want you to hear uh, just the beginning of this letter. It's kind of an opening statement. Then I want us to talk about it. Uh, John writes, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our own hands concerning the word of life, the life that was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Now that's just the first four verses of this uh, short book. And, and I want you to, to ask yourself this question. Who are you more likely to believe? Are you more likely to believe an eyewitness or someone who's just telling you about what someone else said? Are, are you more likely to believe someone who saw it or somebody who heard about it from somebody who might have seen it or might have heard about it from someone else? See, in court, uh, uh, an eyewitness is considered a, a good witness, but they will not consider hearsay as evidence. In other words, hearsay isn't credible. So if you're an eyewitness, then you're called to testify. Uh, and of course, then there's difference between wit just regular witnesses and credible witnesses. Credible witnesses are people whose life kind of backs up their word. So I want you to know that the Apostle John was a witness of Jesus' life and death and resurrection, but he was also a very credible witness because he suffered his entire life because of Jesus. He was persecuted in the early days after Jesus' uh, crucifixion and resurrection and ascension. He was persecuted his whole life as he served Jesus, ending his life in exile uh, on an island by himself. So John lived the life for Jesus. He, he not only talked the talk, but he walked the walk. There is a validity to his testimony. And so he says, look, uh, I want you to know these things. That's why I'm writing this letter. I want you to know these things. Because I was a witness to these things. I saw these things. I heard these things. And here's what I want you to know. John wants you to know that Jesus is real. Flesh and blood walked this earth. John walked with him, followed him, ate with him, hung out with him, saw him perform the miracles, was there at the crucifixion, knew where he was buried, saw the empty tomb, saw the risen Jesus, saw him ascend to heaven. He wants you to know Jesus is real. He also wants you to know that Jesus is God. That Jesus and God are one. He wants you to know that Jesus is the Savior of the world. That, that he suffered for our sins and he was raised from the dead and he is alive today. And he wants you to trust Jesus as your Savior. He wants you to experience what he himself has experienced. That's why he's telling us this. He says, look, the, the, the purpose in this, the reason I'm telling you all these things, there's two reasons. Number one, so that you can experience eternal life. So that you can be forgiven of your sins and know Jesus as your Savior and have fellowship with the Father and with his Son, Jesus. Now, the second reason, the, the second reason he, he shares all of this in this letter is not only to introduce you to Jesus, but so that he has joy. 
Did you catch that? The last verse uh, that I read, verse 4. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. He wants to have joy. How does he have joy? When you and I come to faith in Jesus because of his witness, because of his testimony. He celebrates, he rejoices because our lives are changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's a man who followed Jesus from the very beginning, who spent his life following, leading, teaching, encouraging, and suffering for Jesus. And he says, my joy is found in your life-changing experience with Jesus Christ. Can I tell you that I can relate to that? I can relate to that because the thing that I rejoice the most about is seeing you come to that face-to-face realization that Jesus is the Son of God and Savior of the world, that he died for your sins personally, that he was raised from the dead, and seeing you make that commitment to follow Jesus is what thrills my heart. Uh, I just praise God for that every single time because every single one of those is a miracle of life change. So I'm going to close this just by asking you this. Do you know him? Do you know that Jesus is real? Do you know that that Jesus is God? Do you know that Jesus really is alive? The resurrection is true? And do you know Jesus as your Savior? It's my prayer that you do. And if you have any questions about that, please feel free to contact me or any of the pastors at Calvary because we would love to talk with you about that life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. God bless and have a great day.